Oh my god, I'm so excited to play Edison Format on the Edison Format Simulator on my computer. So um, I'm just gonna go to my computer. I'm gonna play that right now. Let's let's see what what's going on. There's a guy. Except I'm gonna just normal summon a card trooper and um, hmm, it just goes straight to the middle. I don't pick the zone. It just goes right there. Uh, that's probably fine. I'm going to now set a spell and trap card and huh that goes straight to the middle column as well i mean this is edison format there's there's nothing that could punish the simulator for doing this i'm just going to go to my end phase and no so there i was on the new Edison format section on Dueling Book that was recently added. And uh, in the simulator, when you normal summon a monster, uh, it just automatically puts it in the middle column. And when you set a spell or trap card, it also automatically sets it in the middle column. This shouldn't be a problem. I mean, columns and zones, they aren't really a thing in Edison format. We're not playing with mech knights. Until I show up and tell you it's time to start worrying about it. Curse tech, blasting fuse. We're playing columns. We're, do we're doing a column episode. And you might be a little surprised because this deck is kind of good. You see, columns are not really a thing in Edison format because there's barely any column cards. There are four to be specific. There is an alien that can attack directly when it's not in front of something. Then there's a rhino that gets 500 attack when it is in front of something. Then there's a junior journey reference. And then there is the feature card of this episode, Blasting Fuse. Basically, when all zones in the column are filled, you blow everything up. This seems conditional and bad, but I am here to tell you it is conditional and only kind of bad. When you really think about it, it is just Icarus Attack. It is two of your cards for two of your opponent's cards. And this interaction becomes even easier to accomplish based on the simulator that most people play Edison format, Dueling Book. Because your opponent is putting their cards in the middle columns, you're going to be able to pull this off in the first turn of the first game almost every time because that's just what Dueling Book does. And also we're not playing a normal deck where this is a two for two. We are playing a deck that tries to abuse this card and make it a one for two. And this is done with probably the star card of this episode, Winged Rhinos. You see, when any trap card is activated, this card can bounce itself to your hand. This obviously works extremely well with Blasting Fuse because Blasting Fuse needs to have the activation conditions met when it's activated, then Winged Rhinos will bounce to your hand and you get to destroy your opponent's cards basically in a one for two exchange. Winged Rhinos is also insane against your opponent's trap cards. It can dodge bottomless, deep prison, mirror force, basically any trap, it can bounce itself to the hand and dodge. And you know we are going to be popping a few babies in this episode. We're playing Baby Sarasaurus. Blasting Fuse with Baby Sarasaurus is just Two for one plus 1900 attack monster. I mean, come on, let's get into the deck profile. Behold my Blasting Fuse Wing Rhinos deck profile. This deck is very cool and is heavily inspired by a deck called Falcon Punch from Tengu Plant Format. I don't know if you all have seen that before. I'm going to link a video by Who Needs Meta talking about it. It is such an interesting take on control and I use that video and that philosophy in this deck. The whole idea is you're trying to win the game using trap cards, gaining advantage with your monsters, upgrading your baby Sarasaurus, and bouncing winged rhinos to your hand. Unfortunately, we do not have a card like Miss Valley Falcon, which can let us reuse our trap cards, but hopefully the advantage we get off of various two-for-ones will put us ahead. We have the giant rat package, which is great, Firstly, because it can get Baby Sarasaurus straight out of the deck, and this card is integral to the strategy, but it also can get us to a toolbox of monsters. Grand Mole is great if they have a Synchro. Injection Fairy Lily is great if they have a large monster. Card Trooper is great with Blasting Fuse and just everything this deck is trying to do. And Exiled Force is great if they have anything too sticky. 
And all of these cards, including the Baby Cerasaurus, work great with Limit Reverse. Target one monster in your graveyard with a thousand or less attack, special summon it, and if it is changed to defense position, it is destroyed. This is very funny. I think you might have heard in my dinosaur episode, you can summon a baby Cerasaurus and then switch it to defense. It will blow itself up and you can summon any of these dinosaurs out of the deck. But this is even better when you can bring it back to a zone that Blasting Fuse is in. This helps you later in the game when you need to sort of control zones. Winged Rhinos. This card is the heart and soul of the deck. It is insane against your opponent's trap cards, but it also works very well with yours. It is great with Blasting Fuse. It is also great with Needle Stealing. You can blow up all your opponent's monsters and bounce your monster back to your hand. Also, it is great to dodge stuff by chaining normal traps like Limit Reverse or Call of the Haunted. You can just use any of these traps chain winged rhinos in order to get around maybe a monster attacking over it or even better dodging removal like smashing ground or something like this i really like this deck i don't really like control that much but let's get into the games and see what it can do okay let's see this opening hand blasting fuse can we get a winged rhinos thank you we are just going to set a card and pass our turn to our opponent they are going to set two cards and um buddy uh did you notice what columns you just put those cards in? We are going to at normal summon a winged rhinos. My opponent will not read the card at all and activate bottomless trap pull. Um, this does nothing. Winged rhinos can bounce right back to the hand and they're gone. Easy win. That's what I'm talking, a cursed tech win if I've ever seen one. They, we summon a card my opponent's never seen before and they leave. All right, game number two. <laughs> game number two, we are up against our Nemesis Blackwings. And this time, uh, I'm feeling like I can gamble. I'm going to a normal summon the Winged Rhinos and set the Blasting Fuse, and we're just going to pass our turn. My opponent's going to activate Black World Wind, normal summon a Blizzard, and, um, buddy, your columns are full. I can't, <laughs> I can't believe this happened in a real duel. They, um... The Black World win being automatically placed in the middle column absolutely screwed them. We can bounce our winged rhinos. The World win will not resolve. And um, that was a pretty good Icarus attack. They have Icarus attack, but we have even better, just kidding, much, much worse Icarus attack. But with the winged rhinos, you know, you don't even lose the card that you're supposed to tribute. So um, that's that's pretty good. Uh, they just pass their turn. We draw a baby Cerasaurus. We're going to normal summon this wing rhinos attack for 1800 set a couple of cards and pass our turn. They're going to activate black world win, but they are going to change the column. <laughs> this is the type of gameplay this deck inspires. They normal summon a Kalute and we have the blasting fuse. We foolishly set it. The trick is always wait until your opponent has seen it to set it the second time. If I had just held this in my hand, I probably could have gotten it off. They're going to activate this card to put down our winged rhinos down to 900 attack. And then they're going to go into the battle phase, declare an attack, and we can activate this D prison. This will banish the Kalute, and we can chain the winged rhinos, get it back to our hand so it will not be halved by the gale. We end up taking 1300, but I will trade that any day of the week to retain our monster. They set a lot of cards and pass their turn. And then we draw a limit reverse. We are going to normal summon the winged rhinos, attack into this gale. They activate mirror force and we can activate winged rhinos yet again. This card is eating traps like nobody's business. We go to main phase two, set two cards, and then... Oh, oh god. Oh no. Delta Crow anti-reverse. Are you kidding me? Um... Yeah, we get all three of our back row wiped for no reason, and I do not know how we can win this game from this position, but maybe we can do something. They attack for 13, we draw a rat, we normal summon the winged rhinos, attack over the gale, and then we pass our turn. They pass their turn and we draw a needle ceiling. We're going to summon the giant rat and attack. We will get in for 1400 and 1800. We will then set the needle ceiling and pass our turn. They draw for turn, they're going to set another back row and pass again. We draw a saber saurus. We're going to normal summon this baby Cerasaurus and attack for 500, 14, and 1800. Just kidding, they have the Book of Moon. This will put our winged rhinos face down, and I should have attacked in a different order. Um, you will see what I mean in a second. 
They are going to normal summon a Bora. We can chain Needle Ceiling. This guy's face down. The baby will trigger. We get out a Sabersaurus from the deck, and my opponent special summons a Dark Armed Dragon. They are going to pop our winged Rhinos, attack into our Sabersaurus, set a back row, and pass their turn. Um... We only really have one play, so we are going to normal summon the giant rat and pray. Do they have anything? No. We go into the battle phase. We take 1400 to get out an injection fairy lily from the deck, and this is game! Let's go! Winged Rhinos, the Black Wing Destroyer. All right, game number three. It is a best of three versus meta, and Black Wings are back up yet again. Our opening hand looks insane. We will gain a thousand from this upstart. They're going to normal summon a Bora, set two cards, and pass their turn. Look at those columns. What are you doing? We're going to normal summon a Winged Rhinos. This can get over this Bora. Just kidding. They are going to activate Bottomless Trap Hole on the summon. But um, Bottomless Trap Hole does nothing to Winged Rhinos. And we are still in the main phase, so we are just going to set a couple of cards and pass our turn. My opponent special summons a Gale. They're then going to synchro into a Black Rose Dragon, blowing up the entire field. They then set a card and pass their turn. We summon a Giant Rat. This attacks into their Vayu. We set a card and pass our turn. They set a card, special summon a Cyber Dragon, attack into our Giant Rat. And um, we summon out a Baby Sarasaurus from the deck. They attempt to pass their turn, but... um. In the end phase, we can activate Blasting Fuse. They have two cards in this column, and this Baby Sarasaurus will blow itself up and get any level 4 dinosaur from the deck, and then they just scoop it up. I mean, I would scoop it up too. That was, um, that was a humiliation on the Blackwing front. We are going on to game number two. What will happen? Our opening hand looks insane as always. We are drawing these Blasting Fuses like no one's business. They're just going to set a couple of cards, activate Black Whirlwind, Normal Summon Kalut, search a Gale, and then set another card and pass their turn. Okay, we're going to Normal Summon a Winged Rhinos. They activate Book of Moon. We, that's okay. We can set this Blasting Fuse and a couple of back row and pass. They will activate Dust Tornado, sniping off this Torrential Tribute. They're then going to set a card, go into the battle phase, and we can activate this Blasting Fuse, and they are gone! Easy 2-0 against Black Wings. They didn't stand a chance. Huh. So, was I winning because the deck was good, or was I winning because no one expected it? Or was I winning because people saw a card that they had never seen before and they didn't want me to waste their time? Huh. These are all good questions. Let's get into it. This deck is an interesting take on control in Edison format. The Blasting Fuse overperforms whenever it is unexpected. Games 2 and 3, you are going to have a much more difficult time, although not an impossible time because you can still set it up although not as effectively in turns three and four. And it has to be said, the star card of this episode is the winged rhinos. I think Edison Format has gone through an interesting transition where before there was these combo decks like Light Sworn, and now to me, it feels like combo decks still have eight to 10 trap cards like Vayu Turbo. Because Edison Format has taken this turn towards control, Winged Rhinos is an excellent counter against all of these cards that are in all of the top decks. I mean, it dodges all of the heavy hitters, Torrential, Bottomless, Mirror Force, Deep Prison, anything you can think of. And an 1800 body is not too bad. When you pair this with your own trap cards that get more benefits, for example, Needle Ceiling, I think this card is super good. There's a reason why people played it in Burning Abyss up until 2019. Yeah, that actually happened. Overall, I think this deck has quite a few legs. I think the dinosaur package is an interesting package. Maybe it is the best way to play dinos. I don't know about that Miracle Jurassic Egg deck, but I don't know. I mean, I had a lot of fun playing it. I don't normally play Control, so this version of Control that feels like setting up silly combos is just my cup of tea. I'm gonna put this deck in powerful cardboard. I loved the interactions that it was pulling off, and I think a better duelist and a better deck builder could turn this winged rhinos control strategy into something special. Thank you guys so much for watching, and uh, 
Yeah, this was a very fun episode because, I mean, columns. I love these weird mechanics, and this episode was just so much fun. Have a good one, and uh, I will see you in the next one. I also want to shout out my channel members. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. And that is Marcus Willebrandt, Fabrizio Petrulli, Live, Victor Von Doom, Yell24, Your Moonstone, Pils Ganom, Pil Pils Ganom? I might need some pronunciation help with that one. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Outback YGO, Appellate Lawyer, Harold Garita, and D Blakes55. Thank you guys so much, and I promise I will have some more members' videos soon. Thanks.